Hello and welcome back to War Thunder. Today I want to present you the Martin Baker 5, which is a British premium fighter aircraft at battle rating 5.3. Now I want to begin, in the beginning I want to talk a little bit about what I think about the aircraft and then show you some scenes. Now um, I think one of War Thunder's biggest strength is that it has a lot of different modes where if you are fed up with one mod due to, you know, your um, grinding of so let's say a tank and you had a few bad battles you have the option to go into another mode made be arcade or into a pure uh, aircraft mode such as rrb and um, you know it, there is the place for the martin baker 5 because i think in tank rb it's a bit pointless because um, it has no bombs and no rockets so no ordnance you have no machine guns for um, you know spotting enemy tanks you're not the very best aircraft to fight at low altitudes in turn fight engagements as most engagements turn out in uh, tank rb and um, so the place for this aircraft is a very specialized anti-fighter or anti-bomber fighter so is it good at that not even at that it is the very best in many situations that i found myself i thought to myself well i could have really prevented myself to get into this situation with another aircraft hell even a typhoon or a um uh, or another spitfire and you know i could for sure come have out of this the plane itself is not bad but it suffers a lot from certain issues um, regarding rrb so i cannot really recommend it and i think every other plane has something going for it the spitfires with their incredible climb rate and how good they are in turning or energy fight on the vivern which is even a better fighter in most situations also has a insane arsenal of weapons against any target rockets bombs torpedoes um so yeah and while the plane has you know a lot of ammunition per 20 millimeter hispano mark ii of which it has four 800 in, to in total and 200 per gun which is nice and it's definitely an upgrade compared to uh, the spitfires you know even at that the um, vivern just offers 50% more than that um, So I think as a grinder, it's not the very best it is overall not very fun It's not very good in the climbing process and while the top speed is you know before wing ripping nearly 900 which is very impressive um, The energy retention is not good. It's a total brick at lower speeds so yeah and you're fighting with allied teams and this is an aircraft that really relies on teamwork where then i can see some potential but i can do the same with some other nations aircraft or with uh, other premiums as well and even better so yeah let's see what this plane is about so in the beginning i wanted to show you some scenes and how the plane performs and how i got my kills but also I have to say that at the end I have a battle and where I have a little bit of a rant about something else that I just recently discovered in RRB more often than that. So that was actually a spark. And yes, those are hysterical, but the problem is not that massive as it was once was, that it is still an issue after years of development in this game is just beyond me and whatever kind of argument they bring on we have heard similar stories about you know it being impossible to fix or so hard and then Gaijin coming up with a solution without um, you know initially admitting that there is a problem at all so i'm a bit grumpy with them again um, when playing this aircraft and you know the plane just relies on it it is option less it has no options and yes this turn here of this k4 was a bit predictable so um, it might not really become apparent here but you know the plane has serious issues at turning and retaining energy um, a p47 in my opinion outclasses it in both energy retention high altitude performance and um, overall performance and here i got a hit into the fog wolf he also got a hit into me and just a little bit of damage and the plane well is much 
less enjoyable to fly. Also, you have no combat flaps, so you rely on landing flaps, and if you, um, you know, misuse them, then you also rip them apart. So here I got a really nice kill on a fucking wolf with a deflection shot. It's your typical pilot snap with his spawners, and I'm using here the um, air target, so no armor piercing shots here in the belt which is what I think is best for his spawner mark 2s. Now there is here the top speed and just watch it how I... This was the very first time that I got into the top speed breaking 800, coming to 850, exceeding it, redlining now. I get a critical end of fire on the Heinkel 177 and I nearly got 900 kilometers and I was very close to ripping the wings and I actually got the kill. Next scene here is um, later on um, where I think yeah I'm in a situation that a lot of planes could actually do so the p47 actually got the focke wolf a in a head-on which is nice you know p47 is now being much better in head-ons than focke wolves and um yeah the stealing killed another focke wolf with the rear gunner but the tau 154 um underneath me killed the p47 which is a shame because p47s are so v uh, valuable so a lot of deflection shots some hits and again a pilot snipe and now I'm using here all the energy retention, but I don't feel that the plane is retaining the energy that much compared to even a lower tier P47 that can also go quite up to speeds. And then we see again the Hispanos working nicely here with a nice double kill. So in those situations, the plane doesn't really look bad. And you know it doesn't when you get guns on targets it does the job and it has the huge amount of ammunition compared to some other british fighters but it's just the cannons it's nothing else you have no backup machine guns which i personally find very nice to uh, range find and to you know um, harvest some ground units later on i love to have some backup machine guns but this is not the real issue with this plane and again if you have a long enough time on target you can kill them but with four 20 millimeters it should feel a bit more powerful than that um, so here i'm obviously again in a situation that looks easy because it is it is easy now the problem is uh, overall you know without all those just kill combination clips which are a bit deceiving i have to tell you but i show them to you nevertheless but at least with warning um i think the plane relies too much on teamwork and this is a big problem with you know allied teams where at least four planes are bombers then you have some attackers then you have ground pounding fighters you have planes like spitfires and p51s that go um, into head-on with german d13s or um, b 109s with the 30 millimeter and then are complaining in chat that allied planes are so garbage and then while you're in position you are one against many and it's the typical focke wolf problem that you know there is an enemy you have the advantage you go to attack he just rolls out of the way and you have your damn god hard time to get um, guns on target for a second time without wasting too much energy and you're not particularly bad but not really special either in the energy retention part and you're not the best at climbing your engine overheats after a while but you can control it with mac but then you have a jump in the critical temperature then you have to go off web and uh, still you know control it with Mac there is so much issues and problems with the plane I don't really see a point in recommending it and so it's a bit frustrating playing this plane seeing that it's not really bad but a lot of the times when you are you know top tier which is in most situations always an advantage in this case well, um, German P-47s, they are real, they are a real problem. They are higher than you, they have 50 cals, they have a lot of ammunition, they go into a head-on where they wreck you, um, they can outturn you, they can outmaneuver you, they can, well, 
out-energize you, they're mostly above you, and so you have a problem that is not really your problem in particular, but a problem to so many other aircraft. And, um, you know, in an up tier, well, you even have problems against BF 109s when they outturn you, when they out energize you, when they zoom climb you, when they do equivalent amount of damage to you than you do to them. Yes, I'm saying you're feeling like a Focke Wolf or a BF 109. In many cases, they are even better than you. In a one versus one, I don't feel comfortable uh, against the BF109 at the same altitude. I have to force the head-on. The head-on is my only option because afterwards, I, as I said again, it's a problem to get guns on targets for a second time. To run away or to, you know, out dive the enemy is not always an option. Um, because this is a one-trick pony overall. Again, the plane feels like a one-trick pony. And um, just here in the engagement against the BF-109 in a Spitfire, this BF-109 would be dead. Even a Typhoon, I guess I might have a chance. Yes, I know it's a G-10, one of the most powerful BF-109s that there is. But still, I have to run away. Yes, it's nice in this respect that it's not overpowered, but it's optionless. This is the only thing that I can do in this plane, engaging other planes in air RB, because I cannot use it in tank RB. So I have again rely on teamwork and um, funnily enough the P47M got wrecked here by the BF109 in the head-on, so um, good play by him. Um, but again, he was out of options there because um, we we're working together. And just look how the plane isn't really that nice and this is not extremely low speed. And yeah, it feels very good at high speeds, but that's another issue because high speeds are a problem to come to. So to summarize the aircraft, it is not particularly bad, but it faces a lot of issues. It's specialized only to RRB in my books. Um, for everything else, there are better alternatives. And even at the specialization of, you know, fighting other aircraft, there are much better alternatives um, when it comes to the effectiveness on the battlefield. Again, it's not bad, but there are way better alternatives out there. And while I might, you know, um, advertise here Spitfires, premium Spitfires, this is just the reality. Yes, it is a collector's item. Yes, it looks nice and um, whatnot. But at the end, you know, if you're out of options, if you're out of teammates, like I'm here the last guy alive, I'm pretty sure that I could do much better in this situation in a Spitfire. I could have even, you know, throughout the battle done other moves, play more aggressively, put more pressure on the enemy instead of allowing them to put pressure on me. And this is just the quintessence of this plane's problem. And... Um, you have to play here with every trick and just as I think I might here have a chance to get out of harm's way of this B409. Again, with any other aircraft in my opinion I could have done this but not with that one. The last argument about the plane is that very often you find yourself being the last player alive because of your kind of very cautious, passive, um, careful playstyle that you need to do to get your guns on targets and to ensure that you come out victorious of the engagement and where you want to um, you know, work together with your teammates. For instance, this situation is what the plane is okay-ish at. But again, I can do this with many other aircraft. So let's see how it turns out. Um, I just cut out a large portion of the uh, enemy uh, or of their climbing status. This is not a very first engagement that I do. I dive on an LA-7 that is tunnel visioning, get some good hit into him and the kill. Now there is another LA-7 and I'm just zooming through and he's turning and burning and doing evasive actions and trying to, you know, uh, come out of this situation alive, but he gets swarmed hard. And in this situation, you cannot really control if you get the kill or not or if it's quote-unquote steel killing 
or um, you get rammed or shot at uh, by accident or on purpose by a teammate finally i um, you know kill him and get a double strike and i'm first on team with my kills which will come um, back in a moment and now there is nothing left to me and now this is the end of talking about this plane in particular final verdict i don't really see it being worth it sure it's nice but if you want to have a very good plane there are better alternatives and now i have to talk a little bit about another issue and this is um, a, a combined mixture of various different uh, things uh, later on you will see actually in the results what i'm really talking about um, not specifically to this aircraft but generally in war thunder and it has to do with the hit registration in war thunder i'm not specifically talking here about the sparks but it also might be a little bit associated with this problem. I'm talking here about not getting awarded a kill or awarded a um, assist even. And this is really painful if you're in a stock plane or if you want to grind the line and you have activated a booster. And the first time that it really um, was noticeable for me was when engaging bombers with my German planes. I shredded them, I, I saw off a wing, and they just um, went down you know in, in, a, in a flat spin or whatnot but they were not immediately registered as being dead now the kill stealing aside from that you know another fuckable for a bf109 coming in and just killing the pilot getting the kill awarded immediately and i just get left with an assist if i was lucky in many situations somebody just stayed in the aircraft for long enough to just then crash into the ground and um, i'm not getting awarded the kill or even a kill assist so he just get registered as being crashed and there are many ways how you can crash um ripping your wings uh, or you know overcheating your wings over speeding uh, hitting a tree hitting a building bombing yourself or rocketing yourself in an aircraft i've seen everything and this is just really really annoying and the enemy team doesn't get anything from it so you know it's a death match basically and if half of the enemy team just crashes or bails out before you can shoot them um you might win but if you haven't killed anybody it's just a big waste of time and so this is not just a problem with Daichin but also the community when they just bail out and deny the enemy the kill um, after a long um, scene of you know the enemy chasing um, you down and you just bail out that's just garbage um, maybe you should consider stop playing war thunder or in this case air rb or playing that particular aircraft if it really annoys you so or you're just a scumbag and uh, i hate to see this and you know as a content creator and this is i know a very personal problem it denies me good footage and i don't want to show people you know scumbagging and you know um, complaining about because uh, it might end up some uh, person you know recognizing me and and saying ah now i screw screw over this wannabe youtuber and uh, i i've seen it and currently i'm chasing this yak 3 which is the last player on the enemy team and you know i cannot uh, ground strike I cannot decide the outcome of the game in any other way, shape or form in this particular aircraft. Um, we have defeated all of the enemy team with the exception of one and um, I'm not earning silver lines, I'm not earning research points, I'm not having fun, I don't have anything from this, it's boring, it's annoying and it makes me want to stop playing the game after a while. Hell, I'm spending half of if not two-thirds of a match always just climbing and just waiting for the last enemy to crash or die and i'm really really annoyed as you can see here by the movement of the mouse so it's not really fighting time that i most spend my time in war thunder but climbing you know going afk for two or three minutes uh, watching a video on youtube or answering comments in the comment section or doing some other stuff uh, and then just you know seeing that half my team has either crashed or already died without me having any sort of influence on this um 
you know, if they're over speeding and trying to get a bombing target, if they're just uh, flying directly into the enemy, nothing that I can do. And this is a bit of the matter of War Thunder, but it's really the big problem that we will see in just a moment. Now this Yak-3 here is a big problem because he's just running, he's staying at altitude, he's not even trying to engage us and um, he just actually border hunt, he just went to the edge of the map running 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 and I don't turn around to chase him, I want to uh, let the map teleport me into the other direction closer to him because this is more energy efficient. And uh, so I'm now behind the Yak-3 and um, in this situation it's very easy for the Yak-3 to just do evasive actions, evasive actions over his airfield tracking us lower and lower and we all die within the flak or uh, flak airfield and the flak is also um, a portion of criticism because it kills enemy players not just over the airfields but you know um, I have really registered it over the course of several weeks and months that um, people just um, get shot down over the combat zone by Flak and now the Yak-3 crashed uh, denying us even the kill on him so it was really a big waste of time and um, I don't like this I don't like people crashing I don't like uh, hits and uh, kills or assists not being registered it's just annoying it um, takes out silver lines and research points out of the entire system you know the community is screwing each other over by uh, this scumbag actions and also the um, uh, Gaijin is not addressing the spark issues and the hit registration and whatnot people don't get uh, assists and and so forth so now let's have a very specific look at the results and also the places on the enemy team and let's see how big this problem actually is in this particular um, match so um, for the two kills were which were the most on our team I got 50 55,000 civil lines and 8,000 research points. I guess the income of this plane is okay, but certainly not spectacular compared to other planes, even at lower battle rating that are more straightforward and are easier to play. Um, and now let's have a look at this. I was with my two kills first in team and um, we just got five kills throughout our entire team, but there were 12 players on each team. You know, the enemy team got uh, overall six kills and we lost seven players. Just the P-51 actually died at the end of the match trying to land or whatnot. And what happened to the other seven enemy players? Yeah, that one Yak-3 crashed. I saw a P-8 crashing or bailing out. What happened to the rest of the enemy team? They crashed. They, they were not shot down. Our team was not awarded anything. The majority of our players gained nothing. Nothing. This is a big issue. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you got the point. Give the video a like if, if you agree. Dislike if you disagree. And we'll see each other in the skies of War Thunder.